Quite the storm we're having. It seems Fimble Winter's here to stay. It will pass, though. All things do. In the meantime, how about a story while we warm by the fire? Those filthy spies. That old man sees more now than he did when he had both eyes. Ah, one of my favorites. It's a story of adventure. A father and son working together to overcome insurmountable odds, setting in motion the greatest war the Nine Realms have ever seen. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning. There once was a god from a far-off land who settled in Midgard, disguised as a man. He started a new life, had a wife and a boy. They were happy together, in peace. They found joy. His wife passed away. Kratos mourned with his son. But where one journey ended, a new had begun. Faye's final request, though it seemed rather bleak, spread my ashes atop the Nine Realms' tallest peak. As they readied themselves for the long road ahead, a stranger accosted them in their homestead. Baldur sought answers as Odin's hand. Kratos gave none to the Aesir firebrand. They made way for the mountains. Kratos taught the boy's skills, keeping godhood a secret but training to kill. Gods were always in danger, this Kratos knew, but secrets, he'd learn, could harm the boy too. They found Mimir in a tree, punishment for his wrongs, so they lopped off his head and they brought him along. Mimir held ancient wisdom and knew the lost god of war. He warned, tell the boy, but Kratos ignored. No, no, now hold on a minute. Is that all that's in there about me? Something to add? Actually, yes, I do. You see, Odin, in all of his dreadfully paranoid wisdom, trapped me in that bloody tree for perceived wrongs. And I led quite the colorful life before even meeting him. It all started when I was just a lad in the service of a great fairy king. Riveting stuff, really. We'll have to get back to that later. No! Don't turn the page! I wasn't finished! If Mimir were telling the story, we'd be here all day. Anyways, they met Freya, masquerading as a witch in the woods. A god knows a god. She would aid where she could. She cautioned, you must tell your son he's divine. But Kratos dismissed her. He'd regret this in time. On the road, Baldur's allies, Thor's sons, attacked. Something snapped in Atreus as he tried to fight back. The Aesir lost the battle, but Atreus fell too. Kratos rushed him to Freya. She would know what to do. Freya was disheartened with the father's neglect, but with the heart of Hell's troll, she could save his son yet. Kratos thundered through Helheim and slew the great troll. He had captured its heart, but in his, burned a hole. He returned with his offering. Freya cast a keen spell, and Atreus was healed, though not all was well. Kratos sat with his son, and for once he was true, revealing he was a god, and Atreus was too. Delighted at first, it seemed all would go smoothly. Then arrogance followed and bent Atreus toward cruelty. With tensions flared, Baldur preyed on their discord, casting back into Helheim Kratos and his ward. In Helheim, they learned Freya caused Baldur's plight. His mother's ill-conceived curse robbed his life of all light. They emerged from the realm as they neared Journey's End, but Baldur appeared and attacked once again. Atreus and Kratos were ready this time, stronger together with their power combined. Freya intervened on behalf of her son, begging Baldur's forgiveness for all that she'd done. Baldur strangled his mother. Kratos lunged with a snap. Baldur slumped. Freya wailed. And he died in her lap. Something changed in the world. Snow started to fall. The dawn of Fimble Winter the dusk of it all. Atreus asked, 
Is this what it means to be gods? Killing our parents forever at odds? No! Kratos bellowed as he dropped to one knee. We will be the gods that we choose to be. Finally, together, they reached the Great Peak, finding Jotunheim's temple, the giant's retreat. A prophetic mural showed the life they had led. The boy's mother was giant, they learned as they read. Atreus walked to the cliffside. Kratos eyed the wall slowly. Beneath the boy's picture, a name was etched. Loki. They scattered her ashes and watched as they lifted over rolling red hills. The wind danced, and it drifted. Standing side by side, feeling hopeful and new, the boy was at peace. And the father was, too. With their promise fulfilled, they returned to their home. They trained day after day, lest they'd reap what they'd sown. Atreus grew restless. Wary, Kratos remained. Ragnarok loomed as the great winter waned. Don't tell me you're thinking of stopping here. Things were just getting good. Well, I suppose we could go on a bit longer. An excellent idea. This is the most dramatic part. On second thought, perhaps we'd better cut it short. It seems that we're out of time. If you want to know how this story ends, I'm afraid you'll have to find out for yourself. Until then. <laughs>